So our goal here is to aim straight. How do we, how do we put this together? I think this is the beginning of having a registry. You know, the advantage that we have is that many of you are using this website actively. And when the, the Mayo Clinic started the hyperoxyluria uh, registry, they did not have a website for patients that had gathered patients together. So we've already got that. We've already put together a group of people who are paying attention to a website that's an amazingly uh, educational and useful. There are community forums where people post questions, um, doctor lists as well. And there's some um, materials here, like a couple of articles and uh, chapters that I've written that are posted there and are publicly available. The other thing that we did here was this quality of life survey. Uh, and there was basically, um, Matt put this link up to a survey that was run by Jefferson Medical College. I contracted with them. Again, Michael uh, Grasso's uh, The Shot Foundation basically supported this quality of life study. And you could link from this, from the Cystinuria website to Jefferson Medical College and complete a quality of life survey. Um, so that is, that's already happened. And from a, one sense, that's kind of like preliminary data. I've already shown that I'm connected to the Cystinuria community um, by, by getting through this. But I, did, I was able to take the data and submit a, a, uh, a study to the uh, American Society of Nephrology meeting. And I, this is gigantically important because here's a, now Frank is a, a research coordinator. Uh, and Frank has uh, basically been um, analyzing the data here with Laura Pizzi, who is our collaborator at, uh, at Jefferson. Um, and uh, we submitted a, uh, a survey called, a study called uh, Cystinuria and Cystine Stones cause worse, worse health-related quality of life. So I told you what the result is. Not surprisingly, cystinuria was actually worse than calcium oxalate stones. We sent this to the American Society of Nephrology, and we'll see if we get it on the program. But here's the amazing part, which I'm uh, so pleased with and very uh, appreciative of your participation. We got 199 people with cystine stones to fill out the survey, which is unbelievable. I mean, that's, that, this will be the largest survey of patients with cystinuria ever completed. We got 80 non-cysteine stone formers, and Frank and I always think that the fact that the non-cysteine stone formers don't fill out the survey just proves that kidney stones aren't that important to them. You know, it, in a sense, uh, although I have many patients, more patients with calcium stones than cysteine stones up in the office upstairs, uh, and we give them all a letter saying, please fill out the survey, and you do this completely anonymously. So as, as Dr. Liske talked about, there's no way to link the survey to your individual data. Uh, and yet the non-cysteine stone formers don't fill out the survey. Uh, that, just their participation is lacking because it's not as important a, an issue. But what I hope is that when uh, the Mayo Clinic and our uh, other colleagues uh, and I apply to, um, to make a cystinuria registry, the fact that we can get 200 people with cystinuria to fill out a survey is already evidence of a commitment of the community and our connection to it. Then there's also this, the interesting st story about cystone. So this was an amazing uh, story with it, that Steve Erickson, who's at the Mayo Clinic, uh, found a patient who said that this stuff, cystone, which is an herbal remedy, one that's available um, without a prescription, um, not regulated by the FDA, might work for kidney stones. And Steve put together this study, and I agreed to try to help find patients uh, to, to be in the study. And Matt put this uh, up on the, uh, on the website as well. And the thing, the, the really the interesting story that happened in the last year was that people were talking on the Cystinuria Support Network about buying Cystone without being in the study. Since the study involved getting Cystone or a placebo, people said, why don't we just get the Cystone? And I was upset about that. I was upset about that because I felt that doing the study was actually very important. To see if the stuff works, you have to do the study. You have to means that half the people are going to be exposed to placebo, and although that's not attractive, maybe cystone is bad for you. Maybe it's dangerous. Maybe it has bad effects. How do we really know whether it works? And if we on, want to show that it works, the only way is to have a group of people who are taking the placebo. That's called a randomized, blinded, controlled trial. So I believe very strongly in this, and that's pretty much what I've been doing for the last 25 years in kidneys kidney disease and kidney stones is doing trials like this. And so I had sent out a, an email to the community basically saying, you know, I can't endorse. People asked me, Do you, don't you think I should just take the cystone and forget about this? I can't endorse that, you know? And there was kind of an interesting group of letters that then came um, where this was somewhat controversial. But in the end, people said, 
you know, I learned something. I really understand what research is about. And so part of what I want to do in this talk and why I wanted to talk to you about this was basically to promote the idea of research. I think Dr. Liskey said that very well. They've got a group of patients with primary hyperoxaluria. Nobody's ever seen more than the Mayo Clinic, and yet the Mayo Clinic didn't know enough about it. They had to bring in more patients to get enough patients to actually learn something about it. And, you know, if I can tell you that John Rodman studied five people with cystinuria and looked at what, how their urine changed if he gave them a protein meal, and that five patients was the basis for telling everybody that restricting their protein intake was useful. And John Asplin and I put together 80 urine samples. Well, that 80 urine samples made us incredibly important in talking about what, how cystinuria is affected by kidney disease. But it's not enough. We have to get to the next level of research. Here's uh, John's paper, um, which he didn't show you. But there's their report about the primary hyperoxaluria registry, which was published, published in the American Journal of Nephrology. And this is the basis for more research, more learning more about that particular kidney disease. Now, cystic fibrosis is important in, in our lives because my wife is a researcher who studies cystic fibrosis. She's a pediatrician at Columbia. And the cystic fibrosis registry is an amazing example. Pretty much everything that's happened in cystic fibrosis came about because a group of patients put together the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. Now, cystic fibrosis is the most common genetic disease of children. Um, in the world, and so it involves many, many more people than cystinuria, and so they have an advantage there. They also have found a few wealthy people with cystic fibrosis, and we just can't find any wealthy people with cystinuria, <laughs> you know. So I know you're, th I know you're sitting here today, but you know. But this, I mean, this is really Cystic Fibrosis Foundation Registry. It basically has, it has tracks the health of 24,000 CF patients. So this is a huge part of what people who study cystic fibrosis do, and it's a very uh, it's important part of, of our lives because my wife does clinical trials in cystic fibrosis involvement. And if you go to, you know, my really, uh, talking about this talk today is my wife said, you got to go see some of the stuff they have about clinical research at the cystic fibrosis uh, website. And I would, you know, urge you all to go take a look at this because it's really quite interesting. There's stuff about clinical research. You know, here's a, a kid and his mother. Uh, talking about doing clinical research. And there's a lot of interesting information here that's trying to promote the idea that doing research is important. And if the patients don't do it, and if the community doesn't buy into it, we'll never get Hopefully. it done. But on the, on the clinical uh, research website of cystic fibrosis, they talk about the various types of research, treatment trials, prevention studies, diagnostic studies, screening studies, quality of life studies, Frank. That's what we did in, in cystinuria now. There's many different kinds of research, and most of this is sorely lacking in cystinuria, specifically. So what, what can I hope that you can do? First, continue to support the ICF, because this is, this is the beginning. We're really still early here, even though we've been doing this for a few years. And promote it. Talk to people about it on the cystinuria support network, for instance. Make sure that that website is vital and is giving the information that you have there. Let's make it a good website by participating in it, helping Matt and Kathy uh, put it together. So there's a variety of ways. If we get this grant, you know, and obviously, <laughs> can I be optimistic about it? No, but if we get it and we can put together the registry, please participate in it. And that will be the basis for doing clinical trials, which is exactly what Dr. Liskey talked to you about, about uh, hyperoxaluria. We could start doing trials, even if those trials are relatively simple. Does salt, protein, do these, does citrate make a difference? Is there a difference between thiola and penicillamine? It's hard to do those studies because you need lots of people to do it. And maybe some of them are not even realistic. Maybe we'll never have enough patients to do some of those studies that I would like to see. On the other hand, if we just collect a lot of data on 80 people or 100 people, we'll be able to say more about cystinuria than anyone's been, ever been able to say. So I really appreciate you being here today. This is something that, you know, found a little niche here because a lot of people came to us that needed help. I appreciate your time. And if there's anything I can do for you, please let me know. Thanks for your support.